Hey guys, welcome back to Strong Sweet Caroline. And today is the first episode for Coaches Collab. And I am gonna be hosting some different coaches, bodybuilders, fitness people, wellness experts to talk about different topics and hold discussions about things that might be important to you and your health journey. So some of the topics might be bodybuilding related, hormone related, gut health, training, nutrition, life, relationships, everything from you can imagine with health and fitness. So I'm excited today to start this off and we'll be talking with David. My husband is going to be hosting this with me and bringing in some different coaches that we not only collaborate with and talk with on a regular basis, but other ones that we look up to in the industry and are trying to share some of their experiences and their knowledge with people like you. So I hope you enjoy this first episode and look forward to sharing more going forward. First official um, session for Coach Collab. And today we're starting off, all three of us are John Meadows Mountain Dog clients. So kind of cool that we can share that experience and represent. (laughs) And that was something that I think David had brought up to me was how Instagram has a unique way of bringing people together in the industry, whether you're bodybuilders or coaches or fitness influencers, what have you. So wanted to get us together today and kind of kickstart just talking about our background, what got us passionate about what we do and, you know, how we're inspiring and helping people on a day-to-day basis and why that's a big part of our lives. So hopefully, you know, this might not be the last session that we do this. And depending on what people think, comments, feedback, would gladly like to dive into more specifics on some of the topics that we'll just touch on today. Yeah. So speaking of me meeting people on Instagram, for those of you that don't know, Caroline and I did meet on Instagram and we're happily married. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't just pick the same last name. She slid into my DMs. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're not you're not in separate houses. You're you're actually just in separate rooms, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes, quality. right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's uh, go ahead and do a brief introduction of all of us. Most of my followers know me as Strong Sweet Caroline, and I've been in fitness the industry as a whole, almost five years, got started in bodybuilding as an extreme weight loss measure. After college, I put on about 20 pounds and it was unhealthy weight. Um, I didn't really know anything about nutrition, training, anything like that. I was in a sales job traveling in Nebraska on the road, literally like four to six hours per day and started bodybuilding. And ever since then, I've just loved the sport, learning about health and the biggest thing for me is women's health. I lost my period after literally a month of dieting and I was in a surplus, mind you, and didn't have a period for two and a half years, figured out I have PCOS, amenorrhea. And from then on, I started really taking my health seriously and working with a few different coaches to then John um, was able to regulate my cycle and my stress management is still something to today has been a big part of my life and figuring that out. So that's where a lot of my focus is, is on the female hormone balance, period health, gut health, and stress management, and then healthy relationships. Like David said, a lot of women and men reach out to me about how do you balance relationships and life, especially with two very type A competitive personalities and both doing bodybuilding is very unique in itself. So David, if you want to share a little bit about you and your background too. Yeah, sure. So I think we're going to do a deeper dive here in a second on this, but uh, my Instagram name ha- is dynamite underscore D um, and David D. Mesquit is my full name. Mouthful. Now, uh, what got me into bodybuilding was actually uh, kind of an uh-oh. Like I was a soccer player for 14 years of my life. Used to play competitive tennis, but I dropped it for soccer was going to go to college to play soccer. And I ended up getting uh, severely injured my senior year of high school, which included fracture my back, herniated and compressed a disc. I was two months off, tore my meniscus, played a season on a torn meniscus, got surgery. 
then my final injury was permanent ankle damage. I got my ankle kicked out and I didn't want a third surgery. So going into college, I was 135 pounds actually, uh, probably soaking wet at that point. And I kind of needed that vice of the competitiveness and athleticism. And I couldn't get that from running anymore because I was always very, very quick. So I found that adrenaline rush and adrenaline junkiness uh, to take it out in the gym and kind of what brought that's what brought me into the bodybuilding world. Now, there wasn't a lot of information out on the bodybuilding world. That was the internet wasn't what it is today. Um, there was no YouTube series. Uh, you could, there was bodybuilding.com that was starting to become a thing when I first started. A lot of bad information out there, to be honest, if there was information. Um, I didn't know what macronutrients were at the time. Uh, and I've been doing it for 10 years. So I was 19 pretty much when I started and kind of realized I could grow very, very quickly. But like I said, we're going to be jumping into that a little bit further, kind of the evolution of what I have learned and the nutrition piece of it as we're going forward and how I've evolved as an athlete, as well as a coach on my end. Awesome. Oh, I guess I should touch on that. This is, um, I'm getting ready for my third national show now. My first national show was 2016 nationals. Then I did 2019 junior essays last year, um, which I had a torn labrum for, for two years going into it, yeah. had shoulder surgery last year. And now I'm prepping for universe right now, which I'm five weeks out from. Great. Okay. And Kenneth, what about you? So <clears throat> my Instagram is uh, foundry training, nutrition, all one word. Um, recently opened the business, I guess, what, April timeframe, been on Instagram since June. So my following looks like it's a little tiny in comparison to you guys. Um, but <clears throat> been in the bodybuilding world for, I guess about eight years now. <clears throat> so, um, I, um, started because of a divorce. I got divorced and um, my ex-wife left me for another guy and the other guy looked like Superman. And, uh, when the other guy looks like Superman, you want to look better than Superman. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I took the opportunity to kind of diet down and, um, do my first show. Took about a year, lost 75 pounds. Um, came in at about 173 at 3% body fat and, uh, just kind of learned from, <clears throat> guys around me locally had a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people kind of telling me good things and bad things so I kind of had to filter it through myself um, I was on Instagram back then but it wasn't at all uh, informative for me it was more of like how do I compare my body to a guy that I'll never look like <laughs> um, so I got off of that and I started coaching part-time probably four years ago, figured out I was probably a better coach than a competitor, even though John and I, uh, Meadows is, he's coaching me for a show next year. Um, we don't know when, we don't know what or anything like that. I just came off of pneumonia. So lost about 15 pounds and got humbled a little, a little bit and um, now we're climbing back up in the weight. So. I actually um, wanted to touch on something you just said, Kenneth, for both you and David is you mentioned that you don't have as big of a following as either of us on Instagram. And I just want to clarify for followers of mine that an Instagram following is not indicative of someone's success. And a lot of the best coaches that I personally have a relationship with or no, actually have a very small following because they put so much time and energy into their clients, into helping their clients on a local level or on a one-on-one -on -one personal basis that they don't really have time for Instagram. And David, Dave and I both have experiences where we've had to take a step back from posting and focus on what's right in front of you, which is people who already believe in you and support you and know that you've got good information to share and you're knowledgeable. And that's something that I think it's really unfortunate that that's how social media has become is it's a comparison game and whose page looks better, how many likes we can get. 
and it's the world that we live in now. But I think we're going to finally start to see a shift from this plethora of information to more education. And right. would love to hear kind of your input, David, on that. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think I'm going to jump into the nutrition piece really fast then. Um, one of the major questions that we want to touch on today is where do we learn our nutrition? And I was just touching on the fact that bodybuilding.com was the only source when I first started. Um, now, did I ever read bodybuilding.com? Nah, not really. Uh, there was a lot of really bad information out there. And all that I knew is I need to eat, eat big to get big. And that was it. Like lift big, eat big. I was eating uh, anything I could. Got up to 210 pounds within three years. Um, so that's when I knew I could grow. I uh, probably continued on that route for another year or so. So four years in. Did you, did and then you I actually, win or did you look like chewed bubble gum? No, man. Like I had a six pack still, man. I, I would cut down for like spring break and like the summer and all that stuff. Like college so you, kids. So you're dude. that guy. You're the guy that I hated. I, I was always the guy that was like, oh, I'm going to eat DiGiorno pizza and it's going to be awesome. And then I just look fat. <laughs> so. You know, I'm not saying it was like, I like my 210 back then is not my 210 today. Like my 210 today, I'm pretty like ripped up. Um, but I still had a six pack. Six pack never went anywhere. My goal actually at one point in time was to lose my six pack. I want to get so big that I lost my six pack. Never went anywhere. I, I tried. Doesn't like it's it's there. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was actually like one of my goals for like the first like three, four years. Like I want to lose my six pack. I want to get big enough where like I don't have a six pack. And I couldn't do it. Well, let, let's, um, tra let's trade. Let's, let's trade. Body. right I, 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 I think body. like I'm, I'm happy now <laughs> <laughs> um so either way about four years in uh you'll you'll find this kind of funny so uh the first time i got a jump at macronutrients was a lane norton article written on simply shredded.com and i was going to get ready for like my first show it was uh men's bikini aka men's physique and oh, we, yeah. we make fun but like honestly physique physique is a the good physique athletes are great athletes. They train right. legs. They, like right. that's, that's just a running joke. Um, so I, uh, I ended up, uh, doing it simply like reading that article and that I learned how to do macronutrients within five to 10 minutes. Um, to be honest, it was five to 10 minutes of reading is all the macronutrient training that I really needed. Now, uh, as time went on, like I, you know, play with, I played with my macronutrients. I figured out that my body does better with lower fats, higher carbohydrates, high protein diet as always. Um, and I would kind of manipulate my carbohydrates, like if I wanted to lose weight or gain weight. And then uh, I was still kind of bro sciencing like cardio, like if I wanted to lose weight, I would do cardio and stuff like that. Um, and then I uh, did my first show, just stepped on stage to see if I liked it. It was fun. I had a good time. I obviously wasn't peeled because I was having too good of a time, I guess. And then, uh, so I coached myself for that show. Like I, I didn't need anyone. It was, it was like it's summertime and I was cutting down. Right. Okay. Uh, but, but I did count my macronutrients first time. And then from that point on, I kind of tracked my macronutrients to a degree. Um, and it, it worked relatively well. Um, but during this time frame, I had, um, and I had a gut issue. I had a little Caesar's pizza and I got food poisoning or what I thought was food poisoning ended up in the hospital around year four. And they didn't catch that I actually had a bacterial infection, like an actual infection in the gut. So a year later to the day, I had Little Caesars Pizza again, which was funny, put me back in the hospital and they said I had intestinal infection and it had been growing for a year. That triggered SIBO, leaky gut, um, and IBS. I was diagnosed with IBS six times before I started figuring out how to nail it down. This is over a two-year period of time. Uh, at that point, after I actually met my first coach, who's brilliant name's Chase, uh, at that show. So that's the only good thing that came from that show is that I met him and he kind of led me down a path to where I actually ended up winning my first overall show in 2016. But the issue is, is I still had so many gut issues and a lot of people back then, they didn't realize that gut disorders and IBS, especially in the bodybuilding realm is very, very prevalent because of the amount of food that you eat not putting in the wrong, well, a lot of the, just a lot of the foods. So if you have a messed up gut biome, all this is going to do is back up. You're going to feel lethargic, constipated. Um, you're not going to be passing regularly. You're not utilizing your nutrients. Um, mm -hmm. And that can lead to, I, I could jump into this topic all day. Like I, I could just keep going on it, but 
Um, so that was like probably the first like two years like I was with or it was a year and a half I was with him. And then I had to get my stuff right. So I kind of took a step back and actually I, le- I went over to Matt Porter, uh, rest in peace. And I was with him for two years. Now, Matt had a very sensitive gut as well. We really started to nail down the foods that I could eat which tend to be very base level foods. And I just started growing. My metabolic rate went through the roof back to what it was when I was like a soccer player. Um, And I ended up going from like 187 pounds to 235 pounds in a five month period of time. And it was relatively clean weight that I put on. Mm -hmm. And it just had to do with my metabolic rate being through the roof, my training being intelligent and tracked. That was the biggest thing I changed up when I was with Matt is I tracked my training I like two major compound movements per day that I was tracking with progressive overload at the very, very simple. Um, and to this day, I kind of, it, it's much more complex than it used to be then, but it's still progressive overloading. I track major movements and I, my body just flourished and my gut never got better. Um, so I basically beat IBS, SIBO and leaky gut all by basically I eliminated with enzymes basically and probiotic, eventually probiotics. I added them in later on, um, to excrete basically all that bacteria, all that waste that I had built up healing the intestinal lining. And then eventually, uh, figuring out those right foods, those right foods are the most, most mandatory did, thing. Did you eliminate, you just started eliminating foods and then you figured out what did work or did you have another process? That's a good question. So I knew kind of what foods worked for me and I knew chicken wasn't one of them. Now I can eat chicken every single day. Right. But that's four (laughs) years later now where I can actually tolerate chicken. Um, so I knew what foods worked for me, like ground, ground meats worked relatively well. Um, high quality beef, beef, bad quality beef. It just jacks so much, so many people up. It's because it's fat. It's just harder to digest. It's slower to digest, slower to break down. So it's slow to break down you would notice that backup. So maybe at the tail end of the day is a good time to eat beef for me and stuff like that. So as the time went on, we added more red meats in and stuff like that because my body responds very well to red meat if I'm digesting everything well else through the day. Uh, complex carbohydrates, big no-go for me. Um, I haven't been able to do complex carbohydrates since my IBS attack. It depends on how they're cooked. Um, oatmeal is a big no-go for me, which oatmeal, people are like, bodybuilding and oatmeal, it's like a must. No, it's really not a must. Um, it, it, I, I like oatmeal, don't get me wrong, but they're like, I can do sprouted oats, but I can't do oat, br- uh, and I can do oat bran, but I can't do oatmeal, uh, which is crazy, right? But it's just the way the body breaks it down. Um, every single person is so uniquely individualized when it comes to gut health. Um, in fact, when I was with Matt Porter, my biggest was I, I hit 235 again, coming out of the shoulder injury. Well, I had a torn labrum the entire time I was with Matt Porter. I had a torn labrum. And just kept, kept getting misdiagnosed. And eventually I ended up busting out an ulcer. Well, the ulcer I had for four months, I had first off, if you have black stool, probably yeah. have an ulcer, by the way. Um, it's not, it, they say it can be potentially like a bacteria infection of some sort, but it's very low odds if, if it's not like passing or you're not going to the hospital immediately. Um, so I had an ulcer for about four months and we ended up having to back off. And for those of you that don't know, ulcers are actually caused usually from low stomach acid not or yeah, low stomach acid, not high stomach acid. So they give you basically stuff to bring down your stomach acidity to let it heal up and stuff. But then you actually have to raise your stomach acid levels back up, which is really painful part when you're going from having an ulcer and having to come off the proton pump inhibitors. Um, and that was going into junior USA's. I went from 235, started to cut seven months out because we needed to back off the food. I was eating a thousand gram, a thousand fifty grams of carbs a day, four hundred and fifty grams of protein a day. 70 grams of fat. That's about where my macronutrients were at. So it was around 8,000 calories or so off the top of my head. And so let me, let me, pause, let me pause you for a second. I'm, I'm curious about something. When you brought your acidity down to heal your gut, the, so what, what healed your gut? What, what did you do? What was your protocol? So I actually started healing my gut holistically through juice because I couldn't keep anything down. Anything I ate was instantly coming out. If you think about when you get a bloody nose and it runs back into your throat, yeah. it upsets your stomach. Yeah. Same concept. Um, everything, every, it was like liquid just running through me, every single thing I was putting into my body. And so I started treating it through actually plantains, um, great berries, berries, it was organic um, berries and greens. particular berries though. Um, yep. like I was very, very particular on the fruit. 
yeah, Caroline actually helped me with that one. Um, on the fruit selections, then I'd add some protein just to get some nutrient value. And well, this is while I was, I heard I had an ulcer, like my doctor told me I had an ulcer and he's like, but we had to do a endoscopy or not endoscopy. Yeah. Endoscopy. It was an endoscopy to go down, uh, colonoscopies from the rear. Um, and during that waiting time, I started juicing. <laughs> I started drinking juice to basically make sure I got some type of nutrient value, but it actually started to heal the gut. And I kind of actually stayed on that diet for a little period of time while I was on the PPIs. And that's how I originally started to bring it down. But those proton pump inhibitors definitely reduce it. Now, the issue with the proton pump inhibitors that I found is it can, first off, long-term use of it causes major damage over time. Uh, because like I said, most people have low stomach acid. So I went from being able to break down all this food to really slowing down my digestion because I was the stomach was not breaking down the food as well. So it's kind of like, a, I don't know, breaking down food and passing it in little pieces of it versus putting like rocks and pebbles into your body and trying to pass it because you're not breaking it down. Um, so when I had to reverse out of it, it was very, very uncomfortable because I started getting acid reflux again because now I'm trying to raise my stomach acid levels back up. I'm not right. taking proton pump right. inhibitors. So it was um kind of like a catch-22. Like Caroline wanted me to start raising my stomach acid levels a little bit early on. I was like, I can't do it. It's just too uncomfortable. Um, so how did you yeah. make it? How did you make it through the acid reflux? I mean, it, how long was that period of time? Kind of sucked it up. Um, it, I was on PPIs for probably like two to three months. Yeah. Um, there's also some drugs that come into the equation in prep that raise like mess up stomach acid levels big time. Um, which is some, something that people forget about. Like people don't realize how detrimental like PEDs are to the gut period. Like I'm not even talking about just upper GI tract, lower GI tract. I mean, it wrecks havoc. And right. that's why it's becoming so much more prevalent where all these bodybuilders are like, Oh, gut health, gut health, gut health. I'm like, you guys didn't believe gut health for years. And now you guys are wrecked and you guys are talking about gut health. Like the people that were basically saying, Oh, I have like, it just, it's just my body. Like I just, maybe I'm just not cut for bodybuilding. I heard that time and time again. Um, yeah. because I couldn't eat foods, right? No, all these guys are like, Oh, gut health is so important. Like it's one of the most important things. I'm like, you guys are hypocritical just because you guys are getting like wrecked, but you guys are like, we're talking shit all these years for all these people that had gut issues and you guys are actually seeing it now. And now they still don't know how to treat it. And they're, they're wrecking their clients. Right. Um, and then what happens is they come to people like you and I, to try to get fixed. Right. And it's not even, not even just their guts that need to be fixed. It's their hormone. Like just yeah, sir, and it's, it's, everything. it's, a, it's, it's really unfortunate. Too. It all yeah, starts in the mind. Honestly, the mind and the neurotransmitters, the stress, all of those responses from the brain are what start into the gut, into the hormone systems. And to David's point about PEDs, the other issue bodybuilders don't think about is the amount of protein intake a lot of times you're over consuming protein than you actually need because you're trying to put on so much lean muscle mass, but realistically your carbs and your fats and your fiber intake, if those aren't in balance and you're just trying to jam protein into your system, you're definitely going to cause more issues in the long run too. Kenneth, I'm curious, what about yours? What's been um, kind of that where you learned about nutrition and like that passion that you've gotten for it? So I am not a registered dietitian. I am not at all a certified nutritionist. Um, I don't have a certification at all. Um, my certification is, you know, life of hard knocks and doing it the wrong way and then doing some of it right and then consulting people and figuring out <clears throat> what works with myself. And then when I started with clients, um, to be fully transparent, there were times where I'd be like, Hey, we're going to try this and we're going to see if it works. Um, but I think initially <clears throat> to answer your question specifically, my, my best friend, Patrick Richardson, he's an IFBB pro. Um, he, he was just a plethora of knowledge just from a standpoint of macros and, um, stuff like that. But at the time when I entered into the world of bodybuilding, he and I didn't know each other. Um, <clears throat> I had a coach that was a good guy, a cookie cutter coach, knew how to get somebody lean. Basically, if you want to eat tilapia and broccoli for every day of the week, every meal for eight weeks, 
then you're going to be shredded. <laughs> so um, I definitely was, but I learned that um, it, it just it wrecked me mentally. <clears throat> I had uh, had so many, uh, I guess, body dysmorphia type thought processes. And I remember, you know, doing my first show and I ended up winning the show and I looked really good. And um, I did a podcast that went into that a couple of weeks ago. But um, anyway, I woke up the next day, I was 20 pounds heavier <clears throat> from one cheat meal. And uh, I remember looking in the mirror and literally crying. I cried like a big baby because I was like, all this hard work, I look like this now, what am I doing? This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And now I go look at that picture. I'm like, that dude looks awesome. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think that that was probably the start of the journey with me and Patrick trying to figure out, okay, how do I do this right? How do I go into a bulk phase and do that right? How do I do uh, training well? So he was my basis of good information. <clears throat> and as I kind of grew my repertoire with him, I also used my own experiences and client experiences to build on top of it. But he was a good solid base. And then you have access to like Fuad's podcast, you know, like he has Patrick Tour on or uh, AJ Sims or these guys that are top of the field. And if you pay attention, they give you just enough that if you know enough, then you can connect the dots. But if okay. you're dumb as hell, then you're not going to figure it out and you're going to try some stuff and really screw it up. So um, Justin Harris would be one too. Me and Justin probably have a lot of the same philosophies <coughs> um, in a lot of ways. But I would say just sources throughout the industry that are valid. Um, John came in this year for me. We met at a seminar down here in Raleigh. And uh, after that, I decided I was going to launch my business. So I kind of picked his brain about that. And <clears throat> he was kind enough to do that. And uh, I think watching him build my diet has made me think about things differently too. And then, you know, even DM conversations with me and David, I mean, I'll look up and it's been an hour and we've talked about all kinds of things and we really come away with the same mindset. Um, he might give me a little bit of information that I hadn't thought of or something like that, but I'm always trying to pick up stuff <clears throat> and implement it as I go. And it only applies to certain cases because I even have, um, you know, these female clients that are really tough. Sam Miller Science, uh, I'm actually doing his mentorship program. I don't know if you've ever seen his Instagram stuff, but he's top five, one of the smartest guys I know. Um, he has been sort of a really good guy in terms of metabolism and hormones and um, various different things. Because the female side of it, I know not as much as you and Caroline, <clears throat> but I know enough to get some, some people out of the ditch, right? And then now I've got even more complex cases that I've got to have Sam take a look at, or I've got to have Sam and Patrick and John take a look at, or I'll pick somebody's brain or I'll call you, David, or whatever. And I think that's where like building this community and building even this platform of conversation for your, your YouTube channel, it's going to allow, you know, somebody that feels comfortable maybe talking to you, Caroline, they'll come to you and maybe you don't know, but maybe I know, or maybe David knows and we can all share information and it goes back and forth and different personalities attract different people. And that's the thing that I've learned about my business is since June 12th, I've gained 30 clients, 33 clients. And that has been all word of mouth. It's all a certain type of person, uh, but it's lifestyle and it's competitors. 
and it's based on people's experiences with me and how it applies to their goals. So it's all about experiences with me and people and surround yourself with good people. Is that helpful? Yeah, that was great. And I can echo that for both David and I's clientele is that we have a mix of lifestyle to competitive clients. And to your point specifically, they either reach out to us because they know somebody or they have some type of connection with how our personalities are on our social media feeds, or there's kind of this blend of they want to look like us or they want to be like us. And I think that's where like we have a really great opportunity is as long as we keep showing up authentically and acknowledge, like to your point, we're our own guinea pigs. Like I had to heal my cystic acne by myself through an elimination diet and figure out it was eggs. Like I gained an egg egg allergy. I developed an egg allergy over several years. You weren't not, you were cooking your eggs the same way. I would uh, add variety. I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I would really? add variety huh. to how I cook them and prepare them because I had my own meal prep company too. But like to that point, like the only way that all of us continue to grow and evolve is not only with our own scientific and personal experiences and experiments, but then outreach and mentorship and continued education to your point. And I think that's the biggest value that we can continue to bring is know that we are never not learning and we can't stop learning. And I think that's right. where we can all like collaborate more to bring this value to more people and helping more people. Yeah, I think too, like, um, yeah, I always kind of like remember growing up, right? Like you're like, man, I guys got a Tahoe. I want a Tahoe when I graduate high school, right? You didn't realize it was like 60 grand and you were gonna make like 25 grand out of high school, right? unless you're like David and smarter than everybody else. <laughs> so, um, so like me, I was just this average guy. Right. And so like any time that I saw somebody that was impressive, I'd be like, yo, like, how did you get the Tahoe? Right. And they're like, well, if they're honest, they were probably like, well, I just went into debt for it. But at the end of the day, um, it applies to everything that we want to do. So you have weight loss, right? If somebody has six pack abs, I'm going to go to the guy that's got six pack abs. I'm not, I'm not going to go to the guy that's fat. <clears throat> um, and then when I, like, when I really thought about in the industry, who is doing stuff really well that I'm, I'm just super attracted to from a content standpoint, or even just from like, you don't feel like you're being who dude. And John Meadows was that guy, you know, he is just the quintessential, like the guy that he's like your dad, kind of but kind of like your friend and at the, all at the same time you just don't want to disappoint him like ever like when I lost that 15 pounds with the pneumonia the worst email I've ever sent I think was telling John I lost 15 pounds and he was just so kind with me you know it's so good and having conversations with him about coaching and all that stuff um, I think it was just really helpful to to encourage me to reach out to the people that I really respect and that I really am attracted to for, for whatever reason, whether it's their lifestyle, where they, the way they look or their knowledge or whatever, and really try to integrate that into my own life too. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of what you guys are saying. So I think the biggest help that I have been able to add to my client's life, client friends, whatever you want to call them, they all become friends at the end of the day. They, um, they, they really do. I mean, you feel like you have a, a relationship with them is not only getting them like healthy, but getting them mentally healthy and getting them to a better point in their life. The whole key to being a coach is to understand what's going on in their life because if their life's in shambles for itself, it doesn't matter how their physique feels or their health feels. Their health is already off because mentally they're not good. So if they're not in a good financial space, I'll offer advice and help guide them in the right direction, help them balance their life because once their life is balanced, it's yin and yang. Um, everything just kind of sinks together because overall health encompasses physical, spiritual, emotional. I mean, I incorporate meditation to clients that are high stressors. Um, there's only so many supplements that you can offer, like natural supplements that you can offer and functional medicine that you can offer to really get someone back on track. Now, don't get me wrong. There are places for everything, but a lot of it is something that you can just do on a daily basis, whether it's wake up and having your own routine to start off your day every morning 
or if you have body dysmorphia, looking at yourself in the mirror, there was a point in time, can't make this up, for nationals 2016, I felt like a vampire. I didn't, I didn't realize that I didn't look at my actual face for probably almost a year by that point. And I saw my face one day, I was like, I haven't seen my face actually in a mirror in a year. I was like, that is depressing. And you have to give yourself like words of affirmation yourself because when people give you words of affirmation, it's kind of like in one year out the other when you have body dysmorphia, but you actually have to say it from your heart to yourself. Things like that are very, very hard, especially when you're dealing with competitors that are constantly your worst body part is your best body part. And it's just a mindset to always better yourself. But you also need to explain to people, look, like if you balance this part of your life or if you take just a break to just like take a deep breath and go out for a walk, your life will be so much better. Just just do it. And then like next thing you know, like they're like, oh, my gosh, like you'll get a text message. I feel so much better right now because you're de-stressing, you're decluttering your mind. It's kind of like having a messy room. You feel stressed all the time. So just just to interject, like. If you're out looking for a coach, you know, if you're somebody that's watching this, if you don't have a coach that's got a servant mindset and is like actually caring about who you are as a person, then you need to go because it is completely holistic. You like David saying, it's every aspect of your life. Like I literally feel like I have like, I don't know, the tightest community that I've ever had in my entire life because I'm actually living life with 33 people. You know, it's like, I'm literally like, okay, I'm not going to drop names, but you know, you have all these different aspects of these personalities and these people's lives and what they're going through. What you realize is like, we're all human. We're all facing the same struggles. We We all have the same thought processes and having someone in your corner, who's your advocate who's looking at your well-being, even from a health standpoint, like I consider myself an advocate between me and the doctor. I'm on the front lines, right? I'm going, hey, doc, instead of pulling that metabolic panel that's just got TSH and T4 on it, pull all the hormones dealing with thyroid, please. Um, <clears throat> there's all kinds of different things that are going on. And if, if you don't have a coach that's asking you about your stress, your hunger, your relationships, your, your, uh, your relationship with food, your ability to sleep, your digestion, your poop, like get out now, go run because this person is not a good person to have in your life. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. No, that was awesome. (laughs) Uh, You you saw the words out of my mouth. That's perfect. Yeah, that's great. Actually. Um, I actually just did a, a blog post and a IG post about four P's that you need to have asked by your coach or your, as a client and it's protection, poop, privates, and period. So (laughs) if they're not asking, if you're on birth control, if they're asking about your bowel movements, if you're not asking about like your private parts, if you're not asking about your period and you're a female, your coach is doing you a disservice or you don't know enough about yourself if you don't have those answers to tell a coach. Oh, that's another thing. Self-awareness. Yep. Self-awareness is so key in this industry because nobody's self-aware. Um, and being able as a coach to bring up that, that self-awareness in a person so that they're actually looking at themselves as a whole person instead of they're just goal oriented. Right. But there's perceptions and practices that they have going on that they don't even know they have going on. And you have to ask those questions to drill down to get to where it's going to translate to the goal. Right. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. You were talking about running away from coaches. Um, I think one good thing that we can always say is if you're with a coach and you see that they actually prescribe you tilapia, especially multiple times a day, even one meal a day with tilapia, you should probably run. If it's tilapia and asparagus, definitely run. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, why? Unless unless the client asks for it. If they're like, oh, I just love tilapia. It's okay then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but even then, like, if they like tilapia, I'm like, look, like, you got, like, 
Yeah, his you five have other fish options. That, right? <laughs> yeah, you you have five other fish options. If it's out of price range and you don't like all five other fish, I get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> then right. you're not doing tilapia. <laughs> so. <laughs> But I think uh, you guys hit on some really great points there about just like things people can keep in mind when looking at coaches or even people they want to connect with in the industry that maybe they're not ready to hire a coach at this time. What are some things that you guys really see in either building a relationship with somebody that you admire or just um, having the courage to reach out and ask questions? What are your guys' kind of go-to methods on that? Well, yeah, I think, so go ahead. go ahead, David. Go ahead. Uh, so I was just going to say, um, Kenneth kind of touched on this a little bit earlier about like how he looked up to John. So he reached out to John and he's on with him. Now, all of us can't be so blessed to be on with John Metis because he doesn't take on anyone anymore. Um, so we're just blessed in that aspect, period. But the reason why I got on with John is not only because I looked up to him for his life, his family orientedness. So his morals, I think morals are like the key that you need to look for. And, but then also his knowledge on top of it, um, he puts out very, he's very, very intelligent and he doesn't put all his information out there. Like Kenneth was saying, like a lot of these very intelligent coaches, they put out pieces. I hardly even put out my pieces anymore. I put out a little bit of feelers for people to understand, but here's the thing there. Um, unfortunately social media has led to a very negative world and there's so much internet now that people are like, Oh, well, this study, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, this is why I don't put out – I put out very generalized information for so that people can actually understand. Um, I think that taking complex subjects and being able to dumb it down is a very important thing because people can actually learn. I don't think that it's good to be with someone that is blind trying to lead the blind. You want to have someone that will – make you see the light at the end of the tunnel. So if you don't want to be with us, you don't have to be with us anymore. It's about making your life better at the end of the day. So you can yeah. go I'm out into the out of promise job. land. Yeah. I want to work myself out of a job kind of, I think yeah. too, I think, you know, going back to the communication piece from, for me, what I see from a client standpoint, because I see sort of this um, scale of interest happen. So I'll see somebody follow me. Right. And they're, they're from my gym and I don't know them and I see them start liking posts or looking at my story. Right. And then this translates into like a three month period of time. Well, by that three month period of time, what they've been doing is watching everything that I'm doing. <clears throat> then they'll send me a DM and say, Hey, can we talk about coaching? And I think if you're on that fence, with anybody that you're watching, just go ahead and make the conversation um, when you're comfortable. But it's also, <clears throat> I think if you're a client looking for a coach, you should ask what their philosophy is, what their communication style is, how much do they communicate? What is, what is their expectation for you? Um, what should they expect out of you from a standpoint of like all the different aspects of your life? Um, there's just a lot of stuff. So getting back to the communication portion, I have emails, <clears throat> I have DMs, and I have text messages. I got a random email, no random phone call at like 10 o'clock one night. And it was a, it was a referral <clears throat> and they just were a lifestyle client. They wanted to know kind of what my rates were, stuff like that. And I find that if people are taking the time to do that out of their schedule, then you need to be able to do the same to benefit, to benefit your life. So like Caroline, like if you wanted to learn something, are you going to waste time? Are you going to like, you know, wait, or are you going to look at somebody and say, I want to be like them or I want to know what they know and immediately just kind of reach out and take a risk. Like Patrick tour the other day, I sent him a message. Guy got it right back to me, blew my mind, almost screenshot it and posted it. It was like, this is awesome. You know what I mean? So like take the risk, even the really high, you know, high up guys or, or gals that are really, really talented people. <clears throat> I encourage you to just go and talk to them. They're humans too. They put their clothes on just like we do. Um, they might be busier than us, but if they respond to you, then that means they're probably a really good human and you might want to work with them one day or they might give you free information. 
And what I try to do is I give away as much information as I can that makes people feel comfortable. So if they do come back around and they're, you know, they're not ready for a coach now, but say a year from now, you're like, Hey man, like you gave me all this information that was basic and it got me to this point, but I can't get there anymore. Um, now I need your help. So is that kind of what you're asking, Caroline? Yeah. I mean, in general is more of how do you guys kind of structure the way that you work with people and things that we can help other people looking for coaches think about, you know, because I think there's a lot of different coaching strategies. And to your point, there's a lot of philosophies in the way that people either segment their lives or think about coaching. For example, I still work a full-time day job and I'm working with clients on the side. I have to basically structure my days so that I don't overwhelm myself trying to do too much at once. And there's some people, if they are coaching full-time, I would expect that they would be able to get back to me a little bit quicker or have a quicker turnaround time, but that's not going to prevent me from being clear and telling somebody, Hey, I've got this going on today. I'm going to get you this article that will help you on this problem by tonight at 5 PM like giving myself deadlines and giving those um, clear communication to your point to the clients so that they understand, you know, she's human too. She's got a lot going on. And, you know, sometimes all we can do is just one little bit better. And if we can try to leave the day doing a little bit more than we did yesterday to help somebody just a little bit more, I think that's where we can even just see that incremental progress every single day. Yeah, yeah, I think well, to touch on that too, just real quick, and I'll let you tap back in, David. I was at a seminar one time, and one of the coaches in the room asked John, how can we be better coaches? And um, he's like, treat every client like they were your first one. And I was like, okay, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's where, like, the communication comes into play man, if somebody is reaching out to you at 10 o'clock at night, I'm not saying leave the couch with your significant other and go handle business. But if you get a minute, shoot them a message and say, I got your message. I'll get back to you. That's kind of how I, I work. You know, and I think like the level of care that you're taking with each client is really building the trust. Then that builds your ability to speak into their life because there is no love without trust. And what we're really doing is loving people here. Right. Absolutely. So to that point, um, I'm maybe a little bit bad about it in the sense that I answer almost immediately, um, especially on certain topics. (laughs) I'm like almost immediate. Now it's almost one thing that like Caroline has to go back in when I'm on the couch with my significant (laughs) other and I get up to pick up that phone call at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, if someone's calling me at 10 o'clock at night, they already know that that's about time when I am getting ready to wind down and go to bed. Um, I'm going to look at whatever it is. Um, for instance, this morning, actually, I had, uh, it was five minutes before a client call um, that I had to FaceTime and have, have real talk and how to have everything. My mind had collected. I had a text message. Hey, my fasting blood, close, blood glucose is uh, 117. That's a little high, right? Immediately picked up the phone, called them. And I didn't even say good morning. And they were like, good morning, by the way. And I'm like, sorry, like you caught me off guard. I'm on a short time frame. Good morning, by the way. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) then I jumped into and I explained the situation. I explained the approach that we're taking. And uh, we already have some stuff to already implement for blood glucose levels. But uh, the things that are alarming, like I'm I'm picking up a phone. I'm calling. I don't care like what situation I'm in unless I'm in a movie theater and it's in the middle of like Star Wars or something. (laughs) <laughs> that's right, a little different right, right. but um i mean like i i'm so open with like communication if i get an email i'm as long as i have an email open i'm going to respond usually within like 10 15 minutes at least with like a baseline and if i can't get back immediately i'll be like hey i'm going to get back by this time like caroline was saying like sometimes complex subjects where you you want to give them a reference point to actually read about it um sometimes that takes a little bit longer but you can be, give them a ba- like usually what i'll do is i'll be like hey i'm going to respond in detail in a, in a little while, it's a complex subject. And then I'll type up the complex subject and I'll be like, look, you can read further here. And I might give them like a link to read about it a little bit further. Um, but my job is really to be the knowledgeable one to explain the situation to them no matter what. Uh, uh, like, uh, 
Caroline, you might want to like hold a class for me and David on time management and uh, how to <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> deal with situations you know <laughs> your, um, your approach sounds better than ours <laughs> uh it's taken a while i mean here's the thing we've all in my um my mission and vision for myself is to own my evolution and so over the years before dave and i were even a thing i've always been a type a personality but i've also been a people pleaser and i've had to learn through that and i've actually recently had some issues reverting back to those old tendencies where I am trying to make everybody else happy. I'm trying to think about, are they going to like me for putting out this content? Are they expecting me to put out more posing posts? Are they expecting me to talk more about period health? Putting all this pressure on myself. And I essentially overwork myself, even though I still schedule my day, right? I've had to really be intentional about it. And to your guys' perspectives and points, You have different personalities than me, and that is to your advantage because nobody else is going to be like you, and that's why people go to you. Now, there's always going to be those little things that, yeah, maybe we can get a little bit better about not being on our phone after nine o'clock at night or setting expectations in advance with the clients about sending check-ins by a certain day and time, or you know, if you've got an event coming up that you have to eat out of your diet telling me in advance so that we can set up, you know, some type of parameters to help you pick foods that will not only be better for your body, but that you're not going to feel guilty about eating so we can keep your mentality good about eating at a public event. So, I mean, I don't think like, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. It's just a matter of how are we evolving to be, you know, like I said, that one little bit better every single day that we're still able to serve people, help people, and ultimately the information that we're putting out there, we're bettering the world. So I think um, today we've had an awesome conversation, you guys. And I think the next session, we've got a few other topics that we can definitely dive in a little bit deeper. So if there's one thing before we go today, what's what's one thing that you're going to do this weekend to enjoy some time for yourself and not be necessarily in the servant mode, but what's something that's going to help sharpen your saw? I tell you what, I, I, we have a new gym that just opened up in Raleigh and it's uh, kind of one of these like arsenal equipment, you know, makes you kind of drool every time you think about it kind of situation. I am getting ready to eat my pre-workout meal and I'm going to go train and I'm just going to like put my headphones on. And if I see a client, I'm just going to smile at them. I'm just going to wave. That's it. And that's it. Um, just relax, really. Cool. Other than that. David? Yeah. So I'm in prep, so I'm not going to be eating out or anything like that. But I'm about to eat my pre-workout meal, too. And I'm going to hit some legs. But my kind of like big event for the weekend is I'm probably going to head over to a micro center tomorrow and I'm a nerd and I stream and play video games. Uh, so I'm going to be upgrading my PC a little bit, uh, getting ready for the new graphics card that I'm, that is back ordered for probably another like <laughs> year. <laughs> There'll be a graphics card coming out by the time I get it. So, back ordered. so if you don't, if you don't respond to my DMS or anything, I know what you're doing. I'll oh, just, absolutely. I'll just text Caroline and be like, hey, can you pull them away from the computer for a minute? <laughs> and she'll say that's not happening. <laughs> I shut his door for a reason. <laughs> she locks me in here. Yeah. Used to it. No, you guys got some good plans. I myself am uh, not going to the gym today. I have had a very stressful week and coming out of three shows this season. This is my deload week. So I've only been in the gym twice this week. I've done two cardio sessions. I might go for a walk today. I don't know yet. It's been rainy. And I'm probably going to enjoy a glass of wine tonight and try and unwind and, you know, everything in moderation. And it's Mediterranean diet. So (laughs) nice heart health. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So thank you guys for this first session. And like I said, definitely I'm not going to be the last one. So for you guys who watched, please comment below some topics you'd love for us to go over. Would really appreciate it. I'm linking their Instagram, social media accounts below as well. So you can check those out. And as always, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you and I hope you all have a blessed day.